All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, today, or this video, this episode is about troubleshooting this frame. I can't let it go. Did it balance? The corner balance was good. Um, were there any crazy adjustments that had to be made to get that balance? Not really, okay? Are they all the same? No. Um, so what's the big deal? Well, I'll explain that in this voiceover I'm about to show you, but the ride height's the big issue, um, and shock travel, or not shock travel, but adjustments, uh, suspension adjustments. I can't lower the car anymore to make up and shim, and just all the adjustments I'd make to whatever's already here would be too extreme, and I'm just not willing to do that. I don't want to cut mounts off of the chassis if I don't have to. I don't want to um, raise... Um, uh, spring or uh, shock mounts. You know, I don't want to go through and start chasing my tail here. So anyways, long story short, listen to voiceover, give you an idea of what we're doing, and then we're going to get to work. So follow along. Also, shout out to Kevin Kelly for being on vacation for the last however long while we're all freezing our ass off. So um, I could use some help over here because Matt's doing all the heavy lifting. All right, follow along. I'll talk to you a little bit. So the ride height on the driver's side is almost where I want it, right? Don't necessarily care about the offset right this second, but the ride height is. On the passenger side, that's where the problem is. And not so much on the front, but it starts to get pretty bad as you go to the rear. So that's what this is all about. Me trying to figure out what's wrong and how to fix it. Okay, a little disclaimer here before we keep going. If there's anybody that's sensitive to what I'm doing here, Look, it's just some guy in his garage cutting up a car that he really wants to make cool. No sense in getting worked up. Um, there's nothing really spectacular about this car. Uh, there's a pretty large volume of these cars made. So I'm, I'm just throwing this out there in case somebody, one of my four followers, followers want to comment about, you know, how it's a sacrilege and you're probably going to call the police on me or something. So just... Hang in there. I know this is a long one, but I like sharing uh, basically where I'm coming from and why I'm going through this detail. I'm just being very specific because I want this thing to be right as I can make it. Um, so I'm not driving around something uh, that's just been hacked up and, and just welded up and all that jazz. So anyways, just a little disclaimer. If you're sensitive to what I'm doing, might want to go somewhere else and watch some like original restoration thing. I don't know. All right, back to the, the thing. All right, so I've attempted to get started on this probably two or three different times. And every time I start, I stop and I start trying to wrap my head around the solution. And halfway through coming up with a solution, I go back to trying to just reevaluate the problem. And I'm going back and forth and I'm not making any progress. So I called my buddy Matt and ran him through the gamut of information. Okay, this is where the body sits on the chassis. This is how many shims I have. This is my measurements. This is what I'm off. It's not an inch and a half. It's only like three quarter to an inch. And, but visually it looks crazy. It looks way more off than that. So I'm trying to go through all the information and keep in mind at the same time, you know, the quality of build these were back in the day. So everybody here is getting this first look at someone who's never deal, dealt, dealt with a full chassis car that's over 50 years old or that's 50 years old, trying to build it, modify it, and troubleshoot it all at the same time. Um, and if you talk to anybody that's done any of these before, they're going to probably tell you good luck. And just make sure you estimate twice as much time and twice as much money. So I know I'm not far off in dealing with this. I know this is not the first time this has ever happened or that I've ever had to deal with this or that anybody's ever had to deal with this. It's just making sure that what I do next is correct. All right, well, I have the 12 inch wheels back on the back. They actually with about uh, three quarters of spacing actually are perfect. So I'm gonna build everything off of those. I may actually clearance the front for 12s in case I get brave and wanna run a 12 inch wheel up front. I am gonna to try to open these up just a little bit, just for the sake of 
dropping this thing on and off uh, way much easier with a little bit more uh, of an opening just in case, you know, I don't know if anybody's ever done that, but it is not easy <laughs> to hit a three quarter inch hole half the time. So anyways, I could make a bunch of jokes about that, but <laughs> I'm not gonna, <laughs> yeah, uh, this is it. This is it. I'm gonna devise a plan and we're going to get to work. So this torpedo level gives you a good indication as to what might be going on. It's sitting on the diff brace, which is connected to both sides of the frame. And after a lot of measuring and throwing the level around, it pretty much, you know, we're concluding that the frame has got a pretty decent twist, about an inch of rise on the right rear corner. All right, folks, well, here's the update. And everything you've watched up to this point is the short version. Okay, so I was fortunate enough, the guys down at Brewery, Brewery Body here in town in Maryland Heights, um, Nick Brewery, he... Hey, Daddy. Yeah. Let's get that man. Matt went home, buddy. Why? Because we're done. I'm coming in. Daddy. What? Guys, here's a porch me. Oh. Well, go get her, dude. Go get her. Don't put up with that. Shut the door. See? <laughs> All right. Anyways, so we've got levels out. I've got. Um, anyways, Nick was fortunate. I'm fortunate enough to walk in and talk to him. He lent me his very nice tram gauge. Okay. And uh, this thing has been extremely useful to really get um, to get everything measured. All right. So currently the the frame is square racked. It's not bent or diamond or anything like that. But when we start measuring the height of everything, that's when things get a little crazy. So my passenger side or my driver's side front is a quarter inch low. We're, we're level at number one. Number two, my passenger side is three eighths low. And then it increasingly gets worse on the passenger side all the way up to an inch in the back, okay? Some might not think that's a big deal, but when you, everything that's cantilevered over that mount, the dimension from what I'm understanding and what I'm seeing is um, exaggerated. So it may be uh, seven eighths or an inch, inch and a, eighth at the mount it's going to be an inch and a half a foot and a half out two foot whatever it is right so anyways i've got to make it right so the plan right now is to do it myself um and you guys are going to watch me cut up my frame so don't call the police it's between you guys and me nobody needs to be the wiser we're going to cut this mother trucker between one and two I'm gonna chain this thing to the ground. <laughs> I'm gonna chain it to the ground and I'm gonna pull on that back uh, passenger side. And I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a chassis guy, frame guy. So that's the plan. I'm gonna to get to work. I gotta get a bunch of tube, I gotta get some fixtures, I gotta get some uh, I gotta put all the pieces and parts together to see if this is even doable. So got a game plan. Can't move forward without doing this. I want it to be, I want it to be right. So um, everybody, all the frame people I know or that have answered my calls, they're two, three months out. I'm not waiting. I ain't got the time. So hang on. I'm going to get this thing rolling and, and bring you guys along. Well, good morning, folks. Today I am here at Shapiro Steel and I need to pick up materials to uh, make fixtures and get uh, get this frame in a place where I can start pulling on it and cutting on it and doing what I need to do to get it where it needs to be. I need to get me a saw like this. All right, so Shapiro has like two massive warehouses. 
One of them's across the street. I guarantee it's like a 40,000 square foot building of just random ass shit. Random, uh, random stuff. Anyways, I'm gonna go check it out because I can't not check it out. Do you need a large fireproof cabinet? Or some 36 foot ladders? 40 foot ladders is what they look like. Holy crap. Trailer hitches, hospital beds, some more ladders. Well, what I'll share with you folks is that in the last few years, I have found out that I have become like a hardware geek, almost a hoarder to some extent. And I just hit the mother load. I mean, holy mackerel. These are the new spacers that are going on the car. And if we need any real heavy, <laughs> inch and a quarter. Holy crap, a lot of this is clearly industrial, but there's some stuff in here I need to look through. All right, hold on. All right, well, just to give you an idea, good old North City, North St. Louis. Boy, they keep everything down here. All right, back to the house, get to work. Well, I've got one, two, three, four, five plates to drill out. And <clears throat> this is what we're going for, nothing too crazy. Concrete bolt, boom. Hopefully this is sufficient. These are half inch by four. Uh, tab cons, big concrete anchors. I went that size primarily so I could go to a bigger size if those don't work, right? Instead of going big, big, big. So I've got about $275 in all of this, uh, all of the, the material. So I've got four or five. 28 inch, I believe that's 3 16 by two by two. And this stuff's pretty greasy. But it was, that, that place I got it is super, um, relatively inexpensive compared to like supermarket metals, like their retail, they wanna charge you uh, arm and leg for what I just bought. Um, and that's for convenience, of course. So, uh, but Shapiro's an old school type of place. They got a they got crazy amounts of all fall and waste. And then they, they even have uh, aluminum for milling. So I got picked up a couple pieces of that for uh, some things to come. So stay tuned on that. Uh, hopefully have some more information of that as soon as I get this thing wrapped up. But anyways, uh, follow along. Here we go. I got some real exciting drilling to do. What's that? Did you say cheeseburgers? All right. I'm gonna step you back just a little bit so I don't knock you out with the handle of this drill, all right? Put your goggles on right now. Goggles on. Cheeseburgers. 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 Watch out, here we go. Look at this, that that was almost good night. You almost went to bed early tonight. Watch out, stay back. Did that make noises? Ooh, it does make it. Nice and easy. Go, Dana. Get it, dude. I need all the help I get. Step back, step back. That almost put you down early too. Holy crap. Okay. I've only almost broken my wrist twice. Uh, here we go. You're okay. What happened? 
What did it do? Did a piece of metal fly off and get you on your hand? Let me see. I don't see nothing, but I get it. When you're working out in the garage, buddy, sometimes that happens. That's why it was always important to wear gloves and goggles. I wear gloves. Are y'all done? I uh, the black gloves. You want black gloves? Those are flat. Those are rubber. But I mean, for this, it'll probably be fine. All right, well, all my batteries are dead. So I'm gonna try to install what I have done and I'm just gonna have to go back and forth until I get some more battery. like you goobered up I'm not trying to freaking I mean these fixtures may be useful some other time so I don't mind doing the bottom plate but gosh damn this should hold Getting better. I ordered two on bug of pizza. I have to go out and get it real quick. Okay. I need to hurry up. It's six o'clock now. All right. I'm just, I got this one to do and that one to do, and I'm done. I'm like 15 minutes and I can shut it all the way. I won't even clean up. All right, folks, so all the fixtures are in. I got the one in the back behind the rear tire. All the tab cons are in. Sorry. This will be the cut point if I have to cut. And then if, you know, if I have to adjust these just a touch to get them exactly where I want them, then that's what I'll do. Uh, the, the body mounts, but um, I'll pull the wheels off. I'll work my way back. If I have to do any, you know, I may have to pull suspension off. I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna do it. I'm trying to keep it together. I'll pull things off as I need to. That's really what it comes down to, but uh, wish me luck. That's it for this video. I know it was really long, so thanks everybody for sticking around. This is my process. This is This is how it's going, so. If I can get this knocked out, then I can start moving forward and doing finish work. And God, that's what I'm trying to do. So thanks for watching. Subscribe. And um, uh, don't call DFS or the police. I'm <laughs> Henry almost got smoked by that drill. He didn't really. It looked closer than it was. But he's good. He's good. And he didn't get burnt. He's fine. And he helped me put all the tap cons in. He did a great job. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.